Hi, this is Russ McClellan, designated broker at Keller Williams Realty. If you're thinking of selling your home, why hire us? We have a few simple goals. First, our job is to make you more money in less time by exposing your property to more people than anyone in the business. Second, we will simplify the process. Your Keller Williams expert advisor will identify simple solutions in a real estate world that can sometimes get a tad complex. Third, we will save you time. We will handle the entire process necessary to achieve your real estate goal so you don't have to. We work for you. Finally, we keep you out of trouble. Let's face it, we live in a litigious society and real estate is a big ticket item. Truly knowing how to do the right things in the right order is very important. Hey, call us today and let's talk about how we can achieve these goals for you. 509-888-0038 or simply stop by our office located directly across the street from McDonald's at 1111 North Mission Street. Hi, this is Russ McClellan, operating partner and designated broker of Keller Williams Realty, North Central Washington. Hey, thanks for tuning into our show each and every Saturday morning. I wanted to share the fact that we've been in business now about a year and a half. We have over 50 real estate agents, and there's a reason for that. Mainly, it's relationship and culture. You know, sometimes people definitely look at the money and the commissions and the splits. But at the end of the day, it's about relationships, trust, that familial connection that you have at Keller Williams. That's what we strive to do, and that's how we look at our clients. We now have offices in Brewster, Chelan, and Wenatchee. We have agents in Wenatchee and East Wenatchee and Kashmir and Leavenworth, Chelan, Brewster, really having a good time. So if you're interested in learning about why is Keller Williams Realty growing as fast as we've grown and have as many agents that are focused on their clients as we do, give us a call at 509-888-0038 or just stop by and see us at 1111 North Mission Street right here in Wenatchee. You're listening to Home Sweet Home. And now here's Russ McClellan. Hey, welcome back to Home Sweet Home with Russ McClellan and friends and Tedeschi. Appreciate her coming on. I mean, appraising uh, is a wild topic right now. And as always, in the fourth segment, we got Michael Maher with Prime Lending. How you doing, Michael? Doing good. Happy to be here. Interesting to listen to her. Yeah, thanks for calling in. Uh, I'll tell you what, man, supply and demand. Basic yep. Economics 101. We have a very limited inventory, and what we're seeing, and maybe and you, you see it from all real estate companies at Prime Lending, but we're seeing a tough job. I mean, like Ann said, you know, it's, it's tough being a historian as an appraiser when real estate brokers are the front edge trying to, you know, do the best job they can for their sellers, especially if they represent the seller, right? And mm-hmm. the bottom line is when you have, a lot of people looking and not a lot of houses. You know, you're starting to see these bidding wars. We're starting to see these these different price points and appreciation, and it's moving rapidly. And, and hey, you know, I get it. The appraisers are tasked, ta- tasked with a tough job when it's moving this quick. What I'm curious about is can we talk a little bit about prime lending and, and what the process is if an appraiser comes in with an appraisal that is less than what, we had hoped for when we have a willing and able seller and a willing and able buyer. And, and for whatever reason, uh, hopefully a good one, it didn't come in. What, what, what are some of the scenarios that a lender would do next? No, that's a good question. So on a typical transaction, if, you know, if the comps are, are relatively, we review every single appraisal, but if it comes in low, depending on how low we look at the comps, regardless, if it comes in at value or above, then, Usually it's fine and we're not overly concerned with it. But dealing with one that comes in below, there's a couple of different steps. Typically what will happen if it's not a VA, um, VA is a little bit different. They issue what's called a Tidewater Initiative, and they don't tell us what the value they're getting comes in at, but they tell us that it is coming in low, and they kind of give us one opportunity and the agents involved to provide comps to support the value, but they won't tell us. So there's a little bit of secrecy there and a little bit of guesswork on where they're coming in at. But it's important to have those good relationships with the appraisers to kind of feel them out and say, all right, is you know, is there an idea of what we can get on what we're looking at? And we submit a rebuttal or some comps to support that. And when you say comps, just, F- I'm sorry to interrupt you. Just so when you say comps, just for people that are maybe unfamiliar with the 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 term comps mean comparable sales of yeah. like kind real estate in a similar location, hopefully 
uh, preferably within the you know three months is what they're kind of hoping for, correct? Yep, exactly. It's funny with all the acronyms, we start throwing these around and you kind of forget that people may not understand exactly what they are. So no, I appreciate you explaining that because some people may not. Um, but no, so on conventional and FHA, if it comes in low, we will instantly reach out to the agent and quickly ask for comparisons. And usually we've had very good success because we work with a lot of great agents um, of getting, you know, of, of being able to support the value and get the appraiser to adjust based on those comps. Now, I had recently one, it was on a purchase on the west side where the appraisal, or no, it was a refinance. Um, so it came in, the value came in at what the person had purchased the home for three years ago, <laughs> and it hadn't Ouch. changed a bit. And I, we were all looking at this just stunned that this was even a report. So we, re, we completely rebutted the report and asked for a new appraisal entirely from a different appraiser, stating that this was an actual bad report. So this is possible. It, it takes a decent amount of, of, you know, talking into, and you have to make sure that this is the right time to do that because um, this was significantly lower. And we ended up getting a new report that was much better, and the underwriter agreed and it came in well above what they had paid for it three years ago. So it's, an, it's, it's kind of a, a fine line on what you can say. We're not usually talking to the appraisers or requesting a certain value, but there's kind of this finesse and this dance between the agent, the lender, and the appraiser on really building the best case that we can to support that value. Yeah, I mean, it, it's really changed since the Great Recession of 2008. Um <laughs> Yeah. Really, which was 2008, 9, 10, 11. <laughs> it seemed like yesterday. Um, and it was painful. But, you know, since then, they, they passed a bunch of rules that uh, real estate agents have a, a, and brokers have a really hard time because we really can't uh, communicate directly uh, with an appraiser unless we're asked to do so by the lender. Yeah. And then what I'm finding is depending on the lender, right? And this is one of those things when you're choosing a lender. I mean, you got to understand that the lender better back you up because here's the problem. And I talked, we just talked to Dan. Um, there's a shortage of appraisers in our right. area, right? And so I've seen a lot of lenders, even though they agree with the fact that the example, you know, it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen, you know, where maybe somebody missed the comparable sales and appraiser missed it or just didn't see them or didn't have time to ask for it. I'm seeing that where people are just busy. You know, they're just so busy. They're just not slowing down long enough to really, you know, focus. And when that does happen, I've seen lenders that are unwilling to challenge the appraiser. Now, could you explain from the lender side, is that just so you don't burn a bridge or is that, I mean, are you held liable if you challenge an appraisal as a lender? How does that all go down on your end? You know, I think it has to do with burning bridges because there is such a, a finite amount of appraisers out there that are approved on. I don't know which appraisers are approved on which lenders' rosters, but you definitely don't want to burn bridges. But it's the way you approach it at right. the end of the day. You know, if you approach it from an aggressive angle and you, you know, a accuse the appraiser of not doing a good job and such, there's ways to do it without burning a bridge. And we have very good relationships with our appraisers. We never talk about value. We're never, you know, it, there's a very strict way about doing that. But when we do talk to them, if we have questions about certain comps and such, we can reach out to them and ask why they used a certain comp just so we can get a better understanding of what they might be looking for to educate the realtors on what they might be looking for for comps and such um, to provide. And you know what? Sometimes it happens where the appraiser is not willing to budge and then it goes back into a negotiation and hopefully gets worked out. It doesn't happen very often with us because we work with a lot of good agents, a lot of them out of Keller Williams, North Central Washington, and we're able to combat that and come to an agreement and provide comps that end up supporting it um, with the help from the leadership team there as well. And it makes a big difference if, if the agents have a good leadership team backing them that can come alongside them and work with them to help, you know, reach these decisions or these resolutions if this does arise. And it's, it seems to be arising or, or coming about a little bit more often than it has been, like you mentioned, because of the bidding wars. But at the end of the day, 
if, you know, if the listing agent's done their homework and that's the value that they deem it is, and, you know, there's comps to support it, there should be no reason that the appraiser shouldn't take that into consideration. Yeah, and, and most, almost everybody's doing really well. And, and, and we've had, a, you know, as long as I can remember, I've always had a standing order if in, in, in my company, you know, Orders may be a strong word now, but, um, you know, like the, the game plan is this. When somebody needs something, let's help them because it, yeah. it, it, it is an allied forces scenario, right? We're all in this as a group of people working together. Um, there's a lot of different dimensions to real estate and doing a great job. You hit the nail on the head. I mean, as a listing agent, so when you're going to hire somebody to sell your house, yeah, I mean, as a seller, you want the most amount of money in the least amount of time and and yet we need to have those conversations about comparable sales and do a really good job with homework. I mean, I'm not, I'm about pressing the envelope, right? Because I'm working for the seller. If the seller says, I yeah. want you, Russ, to use your marketing skill set of 30 years in your database and, you know, it's a hot market, let get me the most amount of money. I mean, if that's who I'm working for and I'm in, in that example, I'm going to do that. But I'm going to also have to explain to them that, hey, look, if we're on the front edge of the world as it turns, the historian, i.e. the appraiser, is on the back end. They're looking in the rearview mirror. We're looking in the front windshield, right? So they have to prove things that have already happened. They, they try to get three comparable sales in the last three months to document for the lender that the lender's not loaning money to a borrower that on a house that isn't worth what they're paying because they're really trying to protect the buyer as much as oh, anybody yeah. else, right? And, and we all do remember 2008. I don't think we're heading that uh, way at all right now, but I can tell you that it is a big topic. So I appreciate you just kind of adding some clarity, and I appreciate the kind words. That, you know, we think prime lending is one of the best of the best, and you guys are on uh, you're operating on both sides of the mountains, but you live on this side and the east side. Um, you have an right. office right here in, in Wenatchee. Michael, why don't you give your number uh, one more time? Yeah, 425-760-8824. I know it's not 509, but I am local. I've had the number for years, so it's easier to keep it. Yeah, you don't want 17 cell phones in your pocket? with all the- <laughs> No, exactly. It's a little much. <laughs> one more thing before I let you go. Do you think the rates are climbing? Do you think they're staying the same, or do you think they're dropping? I think we're going to see the rates honestly stay the same throughout the year. That would be my my prediction, um, they kind of, you know, they've had some a little bit of ups and downs, but they've really remained steady. And I think with everything going on in COVID, um, I don't know if we can say that, but um, everything going on in the current atmosphere of, of everything, um, I think we can, I think it's pretty safe to say that it's going to stay pretty steady throughout the end of the year. Now, anything can happen, but from for over the last four months, they really haven't changed all that much. And they're probably not going to dive much lower. That's That's... Yep, I would say... Take advantage of it while you can right now. Yeah, and I think prices are going to continue to rise based on a lack of supply. Hey, thanks for calling in, bud. Um, hey, as yep. always, you know, let's throw the phone in the drawer. Spend some time with your friends and family. Maybe do it outside. Maybe you're tired of each other on the inside quarantine land. But at the end of the day, get some fresh air. Don't be coughing on each other. I guess wear some masks and try to get this thing over with. Stay safe out there. Appreciate you tuning in this Saturday morning in July to Home Sonoma with Russ McClellan. Have a fantastic Saturday. I have a new home Home sweet home Thanks Keller Williams I love my dream home The preceding program is sponsored in part by Keller Williams Prime Lending and Frontline Real Estate. More complete coverage, more breaking stories here. News Radio 560 KP.